changing views, looking in the nasal cavity, this is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Focus on the nasal septum there. The superior aspect of the nasal septum is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, and the inferior aspect of the nasal septum is the vomer bone. This is an anterior view of the disarticulated ethmoid bone, and that's the perpendicular plate right there. The orbital plate of the ethmoid bone is the part of the ethmoid bone right here associated with the orbital fossa. On the disarticulated ethmoid bone, it's going to be much easier to see. It's this part of the ethmoid bone. It might be hard to believe, but there are actually seven bones that contribute to the orbital fossa. The frontal bone contributes to the orbital fossa. Within the orbital fossa, the uh, ethmoid bone contributes. The lacrimal bone, the, fr uh, the maxilla, the zygomatic bone, the sphenoid bone, and deep within the posterior aspect of the orbital fossa, the orbital plate of the palatine bone contributes. So there are actually seven bones. Well, that concludes the bones of the cranium takes us to the facial bones. And I'll tell you what, it's all downhill from here in terms of your axial skeleton anatomy. So we have nasal bones rotating just a little bit. We have the lacrimal bones. We don't have disarticulated versions of either of those. Going back to an anterior view, we have the vomer bone which forms the inferior aspect of the nasal septum. We have the inferior nasal concha here and here. Next we have the palatine bones. Now we're going to have to turn things over to see the palatine bones. You're looking at the hard palate of the roof of the mouth. That hard palate is formed by four bones. You can see a suture here in the midline and a horizontal suture there. These are called the horizontal plates of the palatine bones, and these are called the palatine processes of the maxilla. This is a disarticulated palatine bone. Not very impressive, is it? But this is the horizontal plate of the palatine bone, the same structure as we have right here forming the posterior aspect of the roof of the mouth. The other surface feature on the palatine bone is the orbital process. This is the part of the palatine bone that contributes to the orbital fossa, or eyeball socket. This is the right maxilla, left maxilla, Surface features associated with the maxilla are as follows. For the first one, we need a disarticulated maxilla. Now let's look at something and get our bearings. This portion of the maxilla right here is called the frontal process. That's a piece of the maxilla that's between the nasal bone here and the lacrimal bone here. So this is the frontal process of the maxilla. There's the frontal process sticking up. So the first surface feature on your list is the maxillary sinus. The maxillary sinus is this large opening here. I've changed to another skull. This is a real skull. It's kind of beat up, but it will allow us to see the maxillary sinus on the articulated bone. So you have your bearings there, anterior view, orbital fossa, nasal cavity here. So we're going to look in the nasal cavity and this opening right here. Can you see that opening? That's the maxillary sinus. 
clearly again. We have the hard palate. Recall that these are the horizontal processes of the palatine bones. They form the posterior aspect of the hard palate. These are the palatine processes of the maxilla, which form the anterior aspect of the hard palate. Well, you'll see a little passageway right here, a little hole. This is called the incisive foramen. And the incisive foramen is a passageway for the anasopalatine nerve. There's another opening in the maxilla. This is called the infraorbital foramen. And the infraorbital foramen is the passageway for the infraorbital nerve and vessels. Finally, we have some structures associated with the teeth. Now, you're familiar with the term alveoli uh, from histology, the alveoli in the lungs. Well, in both the maxilla and the mandible, the alveoli are the sockets that the teeth are in. So just imagine removing one of the uh, teeth from the upper or lower jaw and looking at that tooth socket. That is an alveolus, plural alveoli. The alveolar processes are these little bony projections between teeth. And the alveolar margin is this area of the maxilla or down here, the mandible. We'll go over that in a moment, where all of the alveoli are located. Finally, our last bone of the skull, facial bone in particular, is the mandible. And remember that you have one mandible, two maxilla. This is the angle of the mandible. You can palpate that very readily on yourself. The condylar processes of the mandible, right here. Remember that the condylar process of the mandible articulates with the condylar fossa of the temporal bone to form this temporomandibular joint, or TMJ. This is called the ramus of the mandible, important site for muscles to attach. The coronoid process of the mandible, again, important site for muscles to attach. And the body of the mandible goes from one, okay, ramus, the body goes from one ramus all the way around to the other ramus. There is an opening in the mandible called the mental foramen. And the mental foramen is the passageway for the mental nerve and vessels. Just as in the maxilla, you have alveoli, the sockets for the teeth. You have alveolar processes between the teeth and the alveolar margin consisting of all of the teeth sockets. This is a disarticulated mandible showing the condylar process for the temporomandibular joint. The angle of the mandible. The ramus of the mandible. The coronoid process. The body then going from this ramus, so this is the body, all the way around to the other ramus. And the mental foramen passageway for the mental nerve and vessels. Okay, that concludes the facial and cranial bones. The next bone is the hyoid bone. I've mentioned the hyoid bone earlier. The hyoid bone is this little horseshoe-shaped bone. And it is not, it does not articulate with any other bone. Maybe you remember what I said about it. If you go back to these structures, the styloid processes of the temporal bone, so the hyoid bone is held in place by the stylohyoid ligaments and it aids in swallowing.